coming back once again to get another week of delicious ideas for the kitchen. This week we're going to do something that's cool uh, for these hot summer days. We're going to do a veggie wrap made with a homemade garlic herb flour tortilla and then a scrumptious local peach crisp and you will not want to miss that dessert. It is a delicious favorite uh, all times of the year, but especially when the peaches are at the peak of their season in August and early September. All right, so let's get to making the flour tortillas. So we're going to start with cutting some fresh herbs. This is local basil, and we're going to cut about one to two tablespoons of it. Uh, it all depends how much uh, herb flavor you want. I tend to like mine to be a little bit more mild. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to tear off the leaves here. You can eat the stems, but they don't have as much flavor, and they can just add crunchiness to the tortilla. So I'm going to break off these leaves here. And then with the Italian parsley, it's the same. We're going to kind of break off where the leaves are. Get these tough stems off. This is where all the flavor is in the leaves here. And once we have it, we're going to chop it up finely. Okay? So we're going to just kind of bunch it up here and grab it by the sides and just kind of slowly feed it into the knife here. And continue kind of bunching it up while you push it along. As you can see, I pulled a little bit more than just one to two tablespoons, but I always like to have extra herbs that I can store for later recipes. And then, once you've gone through once, you usually have to go through a second time. Just to make sure that there's no big leaves that are going to get through. Okay, and then you do the same with the basil. The basil might be a little bit harder to kind of bunch up because it's bigger leaves. But it's the same concept. Feeding it in and moving the knife towards your fingers. Make sure you're backing the fingers up. I love this time of year. There's always some uh, wild birds outside. It just kind of gives you some relaxation while you're cooking. And that is why I'm a strong believer in having uh, open windows while cooking to get the fresh air. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start with two cups of all-purpose flour and we're going to uh, put a quarter cup of oil, that's extra light olive oil, then a quarter teaspoon of salt, two-thirds cup of water, one clove of garlic, one to two tablespoons of fresh basil and one to two tablespoons of parsley. And we're going to mix this in a uh, um, power mixer until a form, uh, a, a dough ball forms in the bowl. You don't want to overmix it or also make it tough. So just until the dough forms, then stop. And what we're going to do now is that we will set this aside. You'll see that it's a it's formed dough. It's not crumbly or anything. If it if it ever is crumbly for you, you can always add a little bit more water, but only at a tablespoon at a time and continue to mix until the dough forms a nice solid moist form. So while we set the, uh, let this rest for 30 minutes, cover it with saran wrap and let it rest for 30 minutes, we're going to send it over to Tim, who's going to do a fun segment on the tortilla. Tim?
Hey, thank you, Kevin. How's everyone doing on this March rainy day? As y'all can tell, it's Oregon, you know. But anyway, we're talking about tortillas and how the origins of where it started coming, how popular it is in the U.S. today. All right, the origins. People are thinking tortillas has been around since day one when the Earth was created. Well, however, they all was first recorded about 3,000 B.C. So, in a way, it has been around on Earth for a long, long time. And when they first were or tortilla, they were it's like a grain cereal like substance is what it was called or eaten as. It was a cereal grain. Alright, so the first person who founded the tortillas was the the conqueror Cortez. He founded it in the new world of what we call today Mexico in fifteen twenty. And he thought of this concept and just was called it Toxicali. And that was his name until I'll admit, 1800s, thereabouts, until it officially changed the name to tortillas. Alright everyone, so moving on to how corn tortillas specifically are made. They are formed into little golf-sized balls, and then they're splatted down on a, on a, like a cutting board or whatever, and just kind of smoothed out. And then they're transferred over to a hot, grizzling griddle, and then they cook for a little bit, and that's how you get your corn tortilla. Alright everyone, so... Technology has played a big impact since the tortilla has been around. We've been, you know, have you ever been to a Mexican restaurant that you can actually see that then make tortillas? The machines have played a big part in how easy it is to to make big qualities of uh, batches of tortillas. And so, to take a quick look at it, next time you're at your local Mexican restaurant, see if they have a handmade, machine-made uh, tortilla maker. And that was came about about 1960s is when those started implementing into making their homemade tortillas. And so take a quick look and next time you at, uh, no, let's just say Las Vegas, La Hacienda, wherever you guys eat your local cuisine and, and just have a great time seeing the machines and how fast they can incorporate those tortillas. Alright, so popularity to close it out. It's been, it's so popular in the U.S. to have tortillas, flour, corn, whatever flavors you guys like. There's so many different flavors out there that it's so popular in the U.S. so you can find it anywhere, any store. You can make it at home so quickly and simple. It's, it's a very essential. You can have it with wraps or just have it with a sandwich. Um, you know, a lot of people incorporate having tortillas as having, you know, your enchiladas, your tamales, even uh, the veggie wraps that Kevin's created. You can incorporate that as your, instead of using bread, you can use the tortillas. So that's very creative, very tool, and we're very appreciative of uh, the Mexican culture to incorporate that here in the U.S. and becoming such a huge, big asset to um, making food today. Because it's so you can just all right. I just don't feel like I'm bread. Let's have a tortilla. So it's very easy, quick. I like it. Thank you for uh, joining me on this in the know segment, and I hope you have a great day with cooking with Kevin and just enjoy those veggie wraps. Right back at you, Kevin. And welcome back. So as you can see, I've already cut up some of the vegetables, but I'm going to show you how to cut them so that you can do this yourself at home. And we're going to slice just off the top here and the bottom. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll slice it like normal. You don't want it too thin, but you don't want it too thick. Just kind of right in the middle. Okay. And then what we'll do is that um, we're going to cut it halves. Because remember, you're going to put this into a veggie wrap, and chances are the tortillas won't be that big. So you need them to be smaller tomatoes so they're not overhanging. Okay, so now we got that. I'm going to add it to the tomatoes I already cut. Go ahead and just put some of these juices back in here, okay? And then next for the cucumber. So if you come over it over here, the cucumber, the best way to, to take off the skin, I like to use a potato peeler. Some people use a knife. Knife's a little bit more dangerous and you tend to lose more of your cucumber that way. So if you use a potato peeler, you can just get the, the top layer off. The skin comes right off. 
As always, all of my produce is from Roth's Fresh Markets. They're the only place I trust to get my produce. Every single time I buy my produce there, it is just in great shape. It's been well taken care of by the growers and most of the time it's local. Okay, so I cut off the end there. Now with this, it's going to be rather simple. We're just going to do a normal cut. Again, you don't want them too thick, just kind of medium. Since I'm feeding a large group I, uh, with the studio audience, I'm cutting up an entire cucumber, but if you're just doing this for a serving or two, you can get away with a half cucumber. Right, I'm going to add this to my bowl cucumber already. Okay, next up we have some mini peppers. You can by all means use large peppers. I'm using the smaller ones. They tend to be a little bit sweeter. And what you'll do then after cutting off the ends is that you'll cut it just right down the middle and look at that. Look how easy that is to clean. And then what we'll do is that we'll just cut it into strips. That way it will fit nicely into our wrap. Okay, so we'll add this to the pepper I've already cut. I did a variety of red, orange, and yellow because each carries its own flavor. Now orange is the sweetest yellow is the next and red still is sweet but has a little bit of bitterness to it so they all complement each other. So finally here we got some avocado and I've already kind of peeled off the skin on this one but I'll show show you how you do it. You kind of you cut down the middle first and then you kind of just peel the skin back. Okay? Then you're going to place it face down. Cut it here here and then like this. So you're going to do it in little chunks. So we'll go ahead and set that over here. And then for olives, I always like to have olives in the wraps. I just used um, a can of just store bought olives and I drained them out. And then what you do is that you just kind of cut them, kind of threesome, just into smaller pieces. That way it's not as big and overbearing in the wrap. Okay, just hold it in place with one hand, cut with the other. And then finally we got the radishes. So with these little buggers, you're going to cut the base here and you'll cut the top. Okay. And then you're just going to slice them, just like with the cucumber. It's very easy. Make sure that when you're slicing, you're pulling your fingers back as you go. It can be very painful to slice your finger. Okay. And then our final ingredient is going to be fresh spinach. This is organic spinach. So it's not in the best of shape, but spinach tends to absorb pesticides um, more than rather any produce item. This one is not as important to just get the leaf. Like you can eat the stem and it has just as much flavor. Um, I've already washed it. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that there's no like bad spinach leaves. It looks like they're all in good shape. And we'll just add that to our collection already right here. And we'll be right back after a quick break. And welcome back. So during this time, you should probably be preheating the oven to 375 degrees because that's the temperature you'll be cooking the peach crisp at. Then you should also get a skillet pan out and spray it with nonstick spray and put it at medium high heat around five usually on a range. And we'll come over here 
and find our dough. Look at that. It is perfectly set. It's moist. And you'll get off enough that's about eh, a little smaller than a baseball. Okay? And you'll kind of pat it down until you get a circular look to it. And we're going to roll it out until it's about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. Sometimes you have to go over edges over and over again because dough tends to want to retract to its original state. There. Now that is good thickness. That's about an eighth of an inch thick. Okay. So now you'll just kind of peel it up. Try not to let the, the um, sides roll over like that, like I just did. They tend to stick. And there's brown spots right there. That is perfect. And so then in the end, you'll get a product that looks very similar to this. And so now while you let it cool, because that's the best way to make a wrap is with a cool tortilla, because then we'll head it over to the peach crisp now. And we're gonna start cutting this. So the best way to cut a peach is to go straight down the center and you kind of twist it off the seed. And just continue slicing down and get perfectly sliced slices. Then, that's the best time to take off the peel. So for this crisp, you'll need five to six peaches, depending on the size of the peaches. And you'll just take off the skin off each of the slices. And you'll see that I've already cut some of the other peaches there. So you just, the skin is edible, but it's not the most tasty thing. It's uh, fuzzy. People tend not to like it too much. So that's why we are taking the peel off. And what you'll do is that um, when you get to the seed part of the peach, it's almost impossible to get out so what you'll do is you'll cut around it okay and even on the back side here and again you'll cut and skin them and put them into this bowl so now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna put these peaches into a casserole dish and we're gonna drizzle about a quarter of a cup of whipping cream. A quarter of a teaspoon of almond extract. A quarter of a teaspoon vanilla extract. Three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon will go into a bowl with a cup of all-purpose flour, a cup of white sugar, a quarter of a cup of packed brown sugar, a quarter of a cup of butter softened at room temperature, and a quarter of a cup of extra light olive oil. So now what we're going to do so we're going to take a large spoon and first of all we'll stir up these peaches, make sure that they're all coated with the vanilla and almond and the whipping cream. And then we're going to mix up all of these ingredients here, including the butter, and we'll kind of cut the butter in. It's going to be chunky, that is normal. And you'll continue cutting the butter in, just kind of slicing it into the mix. It will be crumbling. That is the intention. It's a crumble topping. So just keep doing it until there's no more big chunks of butter. There'll be a lot of small little chunks of butter, but that is the intention. And it's 
make sure all that cinnamon is mixed in as well. Okay. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to sprinkle this over our peaches. So once we have it all covered, we're going to put this in the oven for 45 minutes or until the peaches are bubbling and the topping is brown. You probably won't use your entire bowl of topping. You don't want it too overbearing. Okay. So now what we're going to do is that this will we'll leave uncovered and like I said we'll bake in the oven for 45 minutes at 375 degrees. So while that's cooking we'll send it to Brennan who's going to give some facts about the peach. Brennan. Kevin. Burritos, shawarmas, pitas, and wraps. Handheld, delicious meals that are popular right now in Australia and New Zealand. But here's a twist. Let's take it all veggies. Veggies are jam-packed with nutrients, minerals, and vitamins. Imagine the possibilities of living off of veggies alone. Spinach is jam-packed full of vitamins A and C and minerals like iron. Vitamin A is really important for your eyesight and skin health, but also helps you fight infections. Vitamin C is really important for things like cuts and wounds. It helps you heal faster, but it also helps you with your teeth and gum health. Vitamin C also helps you absorb iron much easier. And iron is really important for the fact that it helps reproduce your blood in your system. Without iron, you won't be here very long. But what I have to say is, veggies are great, keep going with them, and Albert Einstein and Brad Pitt would love to eat these wraps that Kevin has ready for us. But I think that is gonna be a wrap today. Have a good one, Kevin. Now it's time to assemble the wrap. The tortilla has had time to cool. So what we're gonna start off with is, I just have just a regular brick of cream cheese. We're gonna spread this in here. Just evenly spread throughout the middle here. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to take a couple of these spinach leaves and just put three to four, maybe five spinach leaves depending on the size. You don't want it too overbearing. And then we'll put some of the tomatoes and some of the radishes and some of the peppers. fit handful of the olives here and some cucumbers. I'm just going to lay the cucumbers straight down the middle here. And finally we'll do some of this avocado. This is optional, but I like to put dressing. Specifically this is Lighthouse Blue Cheese dressing into my wrap. You can also do ranch or whatever is to your liking. So now what you do is that you can close it up and set it on its side and there you go. You have a delectable veggie wrap that will be good for any occasion, hot or cold, but this is a very good meal to have on a hot day. And that's what you can also do is if you make several of them, you can always put like a toothpick in the center to kind of hold it together and then stand them up uh, in a display. So while we're waiting for the cobbler to finish, let's send it one last time to Julie, who's going to give us some helpful tips. Julie? Hi, 
Hi, doesn't that peach crisp sound wonderful? Well, I'm here today to help you select the best peaches. Primarily, when you pick them up, uh, grab them like you would a ball because you want to minimize bruising. Look at the stem area. If it's green, it's not ripe. Look for well-defined creases. That's also a good clue. How red it is, surprisingly, is not one of the factors to see how ripe it is. When you are holding it, if it feels like a baseball, it has been picked too early, and most likely it will not even ripen properly. The ones that you want are ones that when you grab it, it feels more like a tennis ball. Those can be ripened within two days by putting them into a paper bag perforate them to speed up the uh, ripening process. Just put an apple or a banana in it. Do it at room temperature, not in direct sunlight. But the best ones are the ones that are, they have a little bit of give without being too mushy because you don't want any shriveled skin because that also means it's overripe. That doesn't mean it's not good flavor. But the most important factor is the smell. If it smells delicious, it's going to taste delicious. If there is no smell, the peach is going to be basically tasteless. Now, if you get the fruit and it's just perfect and it should be used that day and you can't, put it in the refrigerator for two days. Um, it can hold, it can preserve it for two days. And when you take it out, one of the important things is to allow it to get to room temperature, which takes about 30 minutes because that will bring out the flavor. Enjoy the peach crisp and I'll give you back to Kevin. So the peach cobbler is done. I'm going to pull this out. You'll notice how it's bubbling profusely and then the top is kind of glazed over there. The topping has thickened and browned. So now we're going to let it cool at least 15 minutes to allow it to thicken up additionally. And then we'll serve it up with some uh, vanilla ice cream to top it off. So while we let it cool, let's go to a new addition to the show, the question of the week. Let's see if you know the answer. And did you get it right? <laughs> Great to you that did. That was a tricky question, but important nonetheless. All right, so this has had enough time to cool. Ideally, it should sit about 30 to 45 minutes, but if you're like me, I, I can't wait. So 15 minutes is the minimum to wait to allow it to thicken up. And then, uh, depending on how ripe your peaches are, this recipe calls for a cup of sugar. But if your peaches are uh, at the peak of the season and ripe, you might only need maybe three quarters of a cup of sugar, so you can adjust as needed. All right, so let's go ahead and serve up some of this. I'll get some of these extra little peaches right here. And there you go. So we got a delicious veggie wrap that has eight different vegetables in it and a freshly made tortilla, a garlic and herb tortilla, and local peaches in a peach crisp. This will be a delicious meal that the whole family will love and everyone will leave full. As always, keep cooking with Kevin. Mm -hmm.